shoulder, shoulder. And that is how every improv show starts. I don't know. I thought I'd do a little change of pace today, and instead of doing my normal comedy videos, I would um, teach you a skill that I know, which is improv comedy, how to do it. And I'm sure there's probably 100,000 videos of this already, but mine is different because I am gonna teach you the simple way to do improv, just some easy tips and tricks to help you go get going when you're starting off as a beginner. I'm gonna teach you the rules of improvisation. I'm also gonna teach you what to do when you're stuck, some rookie mistakes, how to set up the scene, a kind of improv beginner's class. It's so easy and anyone can do it, even you. Yeah, I'm gonna teach you the basics. So let's get started. So the most basic and most important rule of improv that everyone should know and that they tell you a hundred times is yes and. And what that means is if your partner on stage gives you a gift, not a literal gift, but a piece of information to build the story, you must accept it as the new reality of the scene. If someone says, grandma, then you are now their grandma. You can't say, I'm not your grandma, I'm your son. Cause then what have you done? You have thrown their gift on their floor and smashed it with your foot. And that's not very nice. Say thank you. And, yes, and give them a gift back. It's all about gift giving. It's all about sharing. It's all about friendship. They say, grandma, you say, yes, Jeremy, you've given them the gift of a character and they, and so have they to you. Picture it like you're building a house together. They add a brick, you add a brick. They add a brick, you add a brick. If they say, I love Chicago, so glad we came for vacation. And you say, we're not in Chicago, we're on the moon. What have you done? You've taken their brick out of the house and thrown it and that makes da -da 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 Jenga the whole scene fall apart. And where are you now? You're stuck on stage looking like an idiot. Thanks a lot. No one likes you when you do that. Improv is partnership. It's working together. It's not about you, you, you. This isn't stand-up comedy. If you want it to be about you, go do stand-up. Burn! Okay. Yes and is so important. That is the rule that applies all the time, no matter what. Yes and. I agree with you. I've accepted your reality and I've added my own information. I've taken your information. I put it in my head. Got it, and I'm adding information to the story, to the scene, to our little art. Rule number two is no questions. And I would like to edit that a little bit because a lot of people take it kind of literally and they never ask a single question. But questions are a natural part of conversation. And you can use them in a scene as long as they are still providing information to your partner. So if, if you say, what did you do? That puts all the pressure on your partner and you've now given them the job of creating the entire scene themselves, which is not fair. And they're gonna be on stage like, <laughs> and they're gonna have a nervous breakdown and it's not nice. So instead of saying, what did you do? You can say, did you cheat on me with my sister? That gives them information. That gives them something to work with. So they can either say yes or no. They got an option there. Um, but you're not putting too much pressure on them. Hmm? Okay. So I have a personal philosophy that I like to set up the scene right away. Some people like to just uh, come do it, wait around organically, but I feel like the audience doesn't want to watch that. Like just uh, the, you want to get to the action moving. Let's go. Let's go. I used to be a little too um, trigger happy about it. And I would think like, oh my God, we have to get the information out right now. Because when you start a scene, the audience and you need to know who, what, where, when, why, how. Just like any story, you're telling a story here. So in your first few lines, you and your buddy are trying to figure out who, what, where, when, why. So as we discussed before, you're giving gifts to each other. You're each laying bricks one at a time, one at a time. So a scene could start off like, 
Mom, where do babies come from? That's a question, but it's also giving information. <laughs> you know, your partner knows that you're the mom, they're the mom, you're the kid, and you don't know where babies come from. So you're possibly a child or not. Hmm. Then they can go, uh, son, did your father tell you about this? Now they've established you're the son, a father exists in the picture. Yeah, so we're establishing a relationship. A relationship is so important. We're gonna get to that in a second. Shh, stick around for that because that's also very important, oh my God. Okay, so we've established who. How about where? You could say, uh, son, get in bed, get in bed. Let's, let's talk about it. You're in your house, who? where, what, uh, where do babies come from? And I think we're good there. I think personally that's probably enough to go off of and just fly free. And the other stuff, you know, can come more naturally if you'd like, but right away, I think the most important thing in building a scene is to know what the heck's going on. Crazy. And then once you get that established, you have a foundation laid out for your house love house metaphors. Then you can start painting the walls, adding some art. Someone once used the metaphor of pasta and spaghetti. I think Greg Tavares at Theater 99. Love him. Um, I don't think he knows who I am, but love him. Uh, <laughs> so the pasta is the who, what, where, when, why, the foundation of the scene. You might need to have the structure of the house before you start throwing paint and art, or it's gonna be a mess, right? So the sauce on top is the little details, the fun jokes, the spicy good stuff, you know? Yeah, so when I used to set up a scene, I used to kind of get so gun ho about it that I would be like, hello grandma, we are in the grocery store and <laughs> I have peed my pants and you need to take me home, please. Who, what, where, when, why, how? Not in the first line. And that's so, I mean, sure it works, but it's unnatural. And also, does your partner not get to help? Come on, bud. It's a team effort. Uh, um, it's, yeah, it's, Two brains are better than one, so why are you taking all the fun out of it by making it all by yourself when your really smart partner is here to help you out? So that was a silly mistake I made that now I taught you so you don't have to do it. Great. Those are basically the rules and like I think the most important things to get started. Now I'm gonna talk about just some little pet peeves of mine that I would like to like, stop it, that lots of rookies make starting out. So, can I get a suggestion from the audience? Uh, banana, great. <laughs> I love bananas. <laughs> I hate it. Be more creative than I love X. I'm eating X. Aren't X great? Like, and people always choose food. Why are you always choosing food and then being like, I love X food. Stop it, it's annoying and everyone does it and I hate it so much and it's so basic, basic bitches, okay? So, how about instead you, it's like a waterfall effect with your brain. So you have banana, banana makes me think of monkeys. Monkeys make me think of my trip to Thailand. When I was in Thailand, I got robbed by my friend and it was rude. I'm gonna do a scene about my friend robbing me. The suggestion is just that, a suggestion. It's not the rule. It's not what you have to do the scene about. The scene is about bananas and I have to make it about eating bananas and bananas are in this scene and I'm a banana and banana. No. The suggestion is merely a prompt to get your brain sparking and moving. Okay? So don't, it's not the Bible. A lot of people think, but you didn't, but you didn't say bananas. Freak bananas, dog. Freak bananas. So, it's your scene. Do whatever you want, though, you know? Um, but you can be more creative than I love bananas because you are smart, you are creative, you are great. Another goofy, goofy thing that people always do is it is so much better to start off with 
a relationship that is already established. So before we use the example of mother, son, lovers, grandmother, and grandfather, X, Y, Z, whatever. Do not do worker and customer because those people don't know each other and that is not interesting to watch. Especially, it's a big joke in the improv community of like retail scenes. How much for this shirt? Two dollars. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. It's so much more interesting to watch characters that know each other and have clothes and you don't have to wait through them getting to know each other because you're like, oh God, and what's your name? And where are you from? And instead of, Jeremy, you stole my sister from me and I'll never forgive you. Oh, what? And then you're into it. It's so much better. Pre-established relationships and no retail seats. How much for this shirt? Also, try to remember names. Names are very important. If you hear a name, a lot of times it'll go out one ear in the other. And it's no good, bud. <laughs> Once someone says their name, Hannah, that character's name is Hannah, their name will not change unless you establish in the scene that they've gotten a name change or something. Whatever, it's your world. <laughs> but the audience heard it, even if you didn't hear it they heard it so it now exists in the air and in the world in this little world we've created if they say hannah listen okay hannah uh, got it her name is hannah because later when you address them as a different name the audience isn't gonna know who that is because they're listening you might not be listening but they are you should be listening that's very probably the most important thing Listen up. Listen. My old roommate used to say, listen. <laughs> and then have no other words. But yeah, you should be paying attention to every detail in the scene because if you miss something, it might mess you up and it might mess up the scene and make it confusing for the audience and you. So in improv, try to let go of thinking of the next thing to say and look at your partner instead of thinking in your brain what should i say next look to your partner they're gonna tell you they're gonna give you what you need it's all in their eyes um yeah so if you are ever feeling stuck and nervous and oh my god i don't know what to say next look to your partner and start working on that relationship I found that that has really helped me instead of like, what's a funny thing I could say? Mom? And then just think of something relationshipy. Just keep building the relationship, you know? Daniel, are we still friends? Watching a relationship between beings is so much more interesting than anything else than watching a task being done or object work. You are not doing a scene about making pizza. You are making a scene about a father and son who are trying to reconnect while also making pizza. At the core of your scene, the heart of your scene is the relationship. That is the most interesting thing for anyone to watch. It's a beauty love, like mwah, beautiful. Yeah. Let's talk about object work real quick. If you are holding a glass, Hold your GD glass. Do not... <laughs> Where's your glass go? You had it and now it's invisible? It's invisible? It'll disappear, flow away? What happened? Where'd it go? You need to hold it, drink from it, put it down, and then you can... <laughs> but make sure you put it down. Do not have your glass and then... Because <laughs> what happened? Where'd it go? Did you crush it? Do you have blood in your glass in your hands and you're bleeding and you're not noticing it? What's going on? The, the audience is like, whoa. And it's very jarring to watch. And also, what? What? It makes people uncomfortable. And, and it ruins your little pretend world that you've made with your friend. This is not a gun. This is not a phone. This is a gun. This is a phone. 
uh, yeah. There used to be this dude that would drive me nuts, and he would, like, establish that there was a table, like, like, uh, no, uh, no, plate, cup, and then he would get up and walk straight through the table. And, oh my god, the audience sees that, and they remember that the table was there, and then you walk straight through it, and it kind of pulls them out of the scene, and, come on, dude, pay attention. Listen, a lot of new improvisers will only play themselves in every scene. You can. I've seen lots of successful improvisers do it. I don't like watching it. Um, but, um, I would just like to encourage you to test your boundaries and experiment with playing with characters. Try different voices, try different pitches, hold your body in a different way than you normally would. That's what makes a scene interesting. Getting to know new characters and watching a story unfold of someone else's life. If you're playing the same person over and over, you, sure, you can, but I think it's so much more interesting to See something fresh and unique. Are you tall? Are you short? Are you fat? Are you thin? Do you walk with heavy shoulders? Are you chipper and bouncy? Do you have a high voice? Do you have a low voice? Um, do you have an accent? How old are you? There's a thousand different ways you can play a character. What, why let all those options lay there? Even if you're not comfortable with characters, I would still like to encourage you to try it out even if you want to try it at home in front of a mirror just try improv is not about being funny I know that sounds counterintuitive but if you go out there thinking I need to be funny it's not gonna work you're putting too much pressure on your brain on your body on yourself go out there and think I'm gonna have fun I'm gonna build a story with my partner and the funny will come naturally Way too many times I see people trying too hard and that is what makes the audience uncomfortable and ooh, but they want to see you have a good time. Nobody wants to see you fail. An audience is there to support you and they want to see you succeed because it makes them uncomfortable to see you freak out and not be comfortable. So take a breath. It's not about being funny. It's not about being the best. It's about working together to make something fun. You have people there supporting you, hopefully. So just trust them. Trying to be funny is the death of comedy. And to be honest, improv doesn't have to be comedic. Improv just means to improvise, to make something up, to create. So a scene can be not funny and that's fine. That doesn't mean it doesn't have value. That doesn't mean it's not good. So just see what happens, see what comes out of you. And who knows, maybe, it, maybe it'll be great. Maybe it will suck, but that's okay. Then you just go home, you say, dang it, and then you try again later. I hope this has been a good improv lesson for you. I hope you have learned a few things about how to do improv. Obviously not all of it, but I think those are the most important things to start off when you're a beginner and you're just learning. And you might come up with your own personal philosophies as you go. But the most important thing is to have fun with it, you know? It's supposed to be fun. Don't take yourself too seriously and have a good time.